Hi, this is uh, J. Philip Ferrando with J. Philip Real Estate, and I want to talk about a question that is coming up more and more lately, which is, are we now entering a buyer's market? Uh, some of my agents have been giving me some feedback that they are working with some buyers who are uh, not super confident and are uh, making some low offers, and there's some pushback when the buyers are advised that their offer is not going to get accepted. And, um, you know, it, it's a little difficult. It's, it's kind of, we're kind of in a transition phase right here. So are we in a buyer's market? Well, let's answer the question with data and facts first. That's the most important thing. First of all, let's um, acknowledge the fact that we are in some economic turbulence and um, even the news stories are coming out. Here we are, Wall Street Journal. Mortgage rates top 6% for the first time since the crisis. Rates are forcing some would-be buyers to continue renting or skimp elsewhere. These are all factual matters. There's data here. Uh, so yeah, uh, the market is softening. So is, uh, is it now entering a buyer's market though? That's the question. So let's look at the data and not just the conclusions of people after reading news stories. Hyperlocal stuff. Let's look at our market and figure this out with data. First of all, are we in a buyer's or seller's market? The answer is, drum roll, it's a little complicated. It's a little complicated. So why is it complicated? Well, first of all, we're coming out of a crazy, insane, overheated market where we had a perfect storm of historically low rates, the absence for the first time in history of distressed properties, meaning no short sales, no bank owned foreclosures, no pre foreclosures, because uh, there was a moratorium on foreclosures for close to two years. And we had historically low inventory. So yeah, that will, cause a very overheated market. And we no longer have 3% rates. Distress is entering the market again and inventory is starting to creep up with more time on the market, which I'll get into. So let's look at Westchester County and answer this question with data. Now I will give you a spoiler alert. We are still in a seller's market. It is just not as cartoonish and nuts as the market that we were in eight or nine months ago. I've looked all over Westchester County. Um, I took three random uh, markets, three school districts, one in northern Westchester, one in central, one in southern Westchester. Currently, right now, we have 143 single-family homes in those markets. Average time on market, median time on market is 50 days. There are 138 pending listings in those uh, areas, in that area, 138 pending listings, meaning they're under contract, but haven't closed yet. And look at that. The days on market is almost half, just a little over half of the current active listing. So yeah, a lot of evidence that things are cooling off. Sold in the last 90 days, 245. And they're at median time on market, 17 days. So yeah, wow, we are slowing down. But look at the ratios. There's 143 active listings compared to almost 400 pending or sold in the last 90 days. That is not a buyer's market ratio. If there were 350 active listings or there were under 200 uh, pending and sold listings, yeah, that would be more of a buyer's market. Let's look at a real buyer's market. Uh, I tried to do six months. I unintentionally did seven. Seven months in 2009, 256 sales, 140 average days on market. And that's not the last of it. If we look at expired listings, meaning houses that were listed for sale, expired their listing contract unsold, seven in these Westchester markets, 178 back in 2009. So clearly, while it is slowing down a bit, it is nowhere near reaching a, um, a buyer's market. But let's not just look in Westchester. Let's go up one county to Putnam County. 
active listings, 142 single family homes, median days on market, 44. Pending, 129 properties under contract that haven't sold yet, but they were 35 days on market. So we're clearly seeing the trend. And the sales in the last 90 days, 196 sales, only 24 days on market. So the time on market is increasing, no doubt about that. But let's look at 2009. 161 sales in seven months, as opposed to 196 in three, 145 days on market. Expired is even more emphatic. There's only 43 expired listings in these three markets in Putnam, 258 in 2009. Let's go across the river to Rockland. Active listings in these three markets. We took North, Central, and South Rockland County, 149 active single family homes, 35 days on market. Not a lot of time, folks. It's not a lot of time. 28's less, but there was there are 207 pending deals uh, on the market, uh, rather off the market now because they're pending. And there are 300 sales in the last 90 days, average time on market, 19 days. So certainly the time on market is almost doubled in these three markets in Rockland. But in 2009, that was more of a buyer's market. 300 sales, not 180 days. I made a mistake. 210 days, 63 days average time on market. Uh, 114 expired, 735 back in 2009. So clearly, while the market has slowed down, it is not... Um, cratering. It has slowed a bit. It has gotten, gone from a cartoonish, crazy, exaggerated, 100 miles an hour, as my friend Joe Rand put it. It slowed down significantly, but it's still going about 60. We're still going pretty fast. So why does the market remain strong when we're talking about recessions and inflation and everything like that? Well, if you're old enough to remember, you will know that the market is an incredibly resilient thing. We have had recessions all of our lives. I'm 55. I've lived through lots of recessions in the 70s, in the 80s, even the 90s. No problem with the housing market surviving, uh, thriving rather, in most recessions. Uh, war. It had war for over 10 years. The market uh, sustained that. Pandemics. Once in a lifetime event. The market is resilient with pandemics. High rates. Housing market got overheated in the 80s when rates were 15, 20%. So the only thing that the, the market can't sustain is systemic financial failure such that will cause banks to fail. We saw that in the late 80s with the savings and loans. And we saw it in the 2000s with the subprime and the financial meltdown. Those are the only uh, type of circumstances where the market truly craters. So if you are a seller, be mindful that yes, things are slowing down. So you need to price and present accordingly. But if you are a buyer, just because you read something in the news that things are slowing down, the data clearly points that we are nowhere near a buyer's market. There is no data that points to a lot of bad paper out there calling a financial meltdown that would cause a buyer's market. There will be bumps in the road. There will be hyper-local, isolated events in different places. But word to the wise, we're not yet in a market where you can lowball sellers and expect to have a happy result. Okay? That's the data. We will continue to look and keep our clients informed. Um, if an agent advises you that, yeah, there's, you're going to have to go in strong, the good news for buyers is you're not going to be competing with 10 other people who are going to waive all the contingencies and it's going to be gone in three hours. That's gone. But a well-priced, well-appointed home is going to sell. It will often sell in a bidding war. And what's different now is that if a, price is over, if a house is overpriced or if it's not well-presented, that may stay a little bit longer on the market and may not sell. So the market is a little bit more normal, but it is nowhere near a buyer's market. Good luck to all.